Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to London's Terminal 3. I'm here to take Virgin Atlantic all the way to Florida in their upper class on one of their newest planes, the A330-900 or the A330neo. Let's get inside, let's get checked in, have a look around, and start this journey off right. Virgin was founded in 1984 by the wild and crazy Richard Branson. The inaugural route actually took off from London Gatwick heading to Newark International Airport. Nowadays, about 75% of their operation is from Heathrow. Once you're all checked in on the upper class line, you have a secret-like elevator to go up. I feel like this is like some Willy Wonka and Chocolate Factory stuff. Once upstairs, you immediately see your private security. No dealing with the long lines. After a private security for first class passengers, you're through. Your usual walk through duty free, you get to the main terminal. I check in and say go to lounge H. So that's where we were headed. And I swear, Homeland Security hates me right now. This is the second trip back into the States that I had the four S's. Extra security when you board. This particular clubhouse at Heathrow only allows airline status and Virgin Upper Class inside. Once inside, you're greeted with a lot of open space, a bar, grab and go. But I'm going to head over to the restaurant because I want some breakfast. After being scanned in, take a walk through the lounge, check it out, find your seat. For now, I'm going to sit at the table and eat and then get cozy. But first, order some champagne. Cheers to you. This dining area was kind of small, but you can order food and drinks from any part of the lounge. And you do so by scanning one of these. I opted for an amazing Eggs Benedict, more champagne, and a cappuccino. So the Virgin Clubhouse has a thing called the Garden. Let's go check it out. As you can see, it's the ultimate aviation enthusiast perch. Definitely nerd moments out here. You can watch the planes take off, taxi, pull into the gate, and I came out just in time to see my plane get towed in. Virgin likes to honor notable women in history, and they named this plane after iconic American jazz singer Billie Holiday. In March of 2023, at the time its newest A330 Neo, they named it the Queen of the Skies, after Queen Elizabeth II. Today's journey will take just over 10 hours, gate to gate, going all the way over and down to Florida. A330-900 that they fly was delivered to TAP Portugal as the first airline operator. The leading airline that took delivery of these airplanes is Delta, TAP Portugal, and Virgin Atlantic only having two. I still have about 45 minutes. We're gonna head back inside, have a little more champagne or another drink, and then it's time to board eventually. See that tail just outside the window? That is Qantas's longest flight to Perth. There's a couple other magical spots and Instagram worthy as well. Lastly, in this lounge is a mock up of Virgin Voyages, an adult only cruise. Well, that's a fancy touch. Have a seat. That lounge was pretty awesome. I gotta admit though, when I flew British Airways' first class and having the American Airlines first class dining, that's the true winner right now. I need to get to the gate to get my stuff searched, then I can board. Fun fact. Did you know Richard Branson won the call economy class riffraff? As in the British lower class? It's probably a good thing he was outvoted. That took all but two minutes. I'm surprised. Perfect. A's on the first half. 6K? Excellent. Go straight across and make a left after your seat there. Thank you. Let's start with a new trend. Check out the lav beforehand. Nice and clean, fairly spacious, dark colors. Not something I'm used to on an airplane. As I settle in, let the champagne flow.
unlike in a previous video, I videoed the menu. Pause it, let me know what you'd order. Time for a seat tour. Back over your left shoulder is a cubby with a mirror to take your obligatory selfie. Just below that is a wireless device charger. And just below that is your charging ports, USB-C, plugs, and more. And here are the chair buttons. We'll check out more of that later. Moving on, you have literature and safety cards above. And when you sit down, every seat comes with a unique can of water. I say that because you can pull the tab back and push it back to close it. Next to your left leg is your lights and do not disturb button and your lay flat button. Moving on, the armrest actually lifts upward to reveal this little remote and that little mirror. Another little obligatory selfie. While we're here, let's check out the tray table. It pushes out from underneath the armrest and it's pretty decent size considering this pod is actually a very tight squeeze. I'm six feet tall and the footwell was right on point especially when you laid down. The seats in upper class have the shoulder strap seat belts, unlike economy and premium economy. If it was winter time, hang your jacket or business women or men, hang your sport coat. I hope you enjoyed that little seat tour. Now let's buckle up so we can push back from the gate. I almost forgot, you get two air vents above you. I know that's a big thing for travelers. Let's have a look at this very vibrant in-flight entertainment screen, also known as IFE. It was very responsive, one of the better ones I've ever had. Lots of selections to choose from, and as you saw, there was a kids section. I always tip my hat to my fellow ramp workers around the world. Let's talk about the 787. I hear the layout for upper class is terrible. I haven't been on it yet, but I hear there's the least amount of privacy compared to the other airplanes. These engines were amazingly quiet. Tighten those seatbelts and turn up the volume. Here comes takeoff and a very impressive view of Heathrow and all its terminals. Now that we're airborne, let's check out these headphones Virgin Atlantic provides us. Let's get plugged in. They were decent. There were no British Airways though. Let's open this amenity kit and see what they offer you. Most of the time your amenity kits have just about the same amount of things. It's all about the branding though. Up first are the socks, the eye mask, some kind of day cream, lip balm, toothbrush, earplugs, a pen for the unwanted documents, and lastly, toothpaste to keep that breath fresh. Keep in mind that Virgin Atlantic is more of a business class vibe with a sprinkle of first class touches. Now let's take a look at the Wi-Fi. It definitely wasn't free. 
19 English pounds, though, is kind of steep. But as I like to say, everyone has their price tag. Now let's get ready for lunch service. First things first, they come around and set out a placemat for everyone. Then the most adorable salt and pepper shakers. And yes, you can take those home. For my appetizer, I chose the textures of beetroot. It's goat cheese, mousse, with beets and artisan breads. Something out of my bubble was shockingly delicious. And now moving on to the entree. I ordered a miso and sesame crusted salmon made with sweet potato puree, bok choy, swimming in a honey ginger sauce that almost caused a wardrobe disaster. Last but not least, I chose the bread pudding. I must say I went three out of three on choosing food. And to my surprise, the appetizer was actually the best. One feature that anybody can get behind is being able to close your door on your seat. As I wasn't full already, they come around with these little cartons of ice cream. And pro tip, whether you're drinking or not drinking alcohol, make sure to stay hydrated on long flights. After relaxing for a bit, I decided to open my door, head out, and go check out the social space called The Loft. The Loft is only available to customers flying upper class and on the A330 and A350 aircrafts. This lounge in the sky is perfect to gather, chat, stretch out with a coffee, or even a beer. And that's exactly what I did. I grabbed this Brooklyn Pilsner. Very light and refreshing. There were a handful of plugs and USB A and C if you need to get some work done or charge anything. When I returned to my seat, I saw that my bed was made. So I decided to snuggle up, see if my feet fit, and take a nap. It was definitely comfortable. I'm a side sleeper, so it worked out well. But if you sleep on your back, it's a snug, snug fit. Good night, see you in a few. After sleeping for an hour or two, I woke up to see where I was, only to find out we hadn't even made it to Bermuda yet. I couldn't believe I was kind of hungry, so I grabbed the menu, and my options were scones, hot fish sandwich, chicken Caesar club, and chickpea fritter and samosa. Several good options, I must say, but I opted for the chicken Caesar club sandwich and some hot tea, and dang, that cup was amazing. Check out this detail. I noticed that we were starting to really chase the sun. The sun was getting low in the sky, causing a beautiful glow on the airplane. It was time to put the seatbelts back on as we grew ever so closely to Tampa and started to make our descent. The Florida coast finally came into view. I knew we were about to descend and touch down. My final thoughts on Virgin's Upper Class is that it was really good. Two thumbs up, can't complain. It's definitely not comparable to British Airways. British Airways has a true first class. Virgin's is more of a business class with some first class flair. Definitely don't sleep on this product. Richard Branson did it great. Thank you. Take care. Take care, take care. See you soon. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. If you made it this far, thank you. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button. Hope you enjoyed the journey. Virgin, you were wonderful to me. See you in the next adventure. And if you're not already, subscribe. Consider it. See you in the next one. Good night.